Welcome to the After Hours Podcast, hosted by Harry Haas and James Friedlender, presented by My Investing Club. What's up, guys? We are back with another episode of the After Hours Podcast. Today, we have a super special guest. We have Alex, a frequent returner. Um, so thank you for coming <laughs> yeah, on, the man. What's going back. on? It's good to be on. And if you guys don't know, we're recording this at 8 a.m. on December 29, two days before New Year, man. Yeah. Oh, dude. I'm, I'm depressed that this year's over. I feel like it went like, like that. Bro, I've been explaining it's- to everyone that, like, the last two months, I would say November and December felt like an eternity, but everything before that felt like it fucking flew, dude. I don't know what the hell yeah. happened. Dude, yeah, it's I crazy. Like when, when COVID, like when COVID first hit, right? So that was like two years ago now. I mean, MIC was only like a year old. It was like yeah. just about a year old. Now it's like we're going on three years of this. It's insane Yeah, bro. And it's crazy because when our first, our first, I guess, year of MIC, we threw like eight meetups, bro. We threw a meetup yep. every other month because that's that's what yep. we wanted to do. Our entire yep. mission was to bring traders together because we knew how lonely it was going to be, right? And yep. then COVID hit and it's like, oh shit. Now we went from having all that fun and meeting everyone and everything to being forced to be locked down. And don't get me wrong, people made a fucking lot of money. But bro, as you guys know, you could have a shitload of money. But you know, if you're not interacting with humans, like whether it yep. be like, your friends, your family, and you're stuck at home, it's miserable, bro. It's fucking miserable. So I'm, I'm glad that it's slowly starting to change. I'm glad that it's slowly starting to get better. And, you know, I don't think this COVID thing is going away, but I think that it's something that we're going to have to get used to. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. I agree. I agree. I think I think one thing that's really cool, and I, I, was, I went out to dinner with a few friends the other night, and we were just chatting about MIC, actually. And I was saying how it originally was so cool because what we could get together and like meet in person, but through COVID, like I think what makes MIC so special is we all are really close. I mean, we talk so much, especially during the shutdown, like all we could do was sit inside and like stay on Slack. So it was like all the mods, everybody were so close and it's like a, it really is like a tight knit family. So I think it's, that's what makes this community so special too. It's true, bro. It's true. Like, like we're having our meetup next month uh, in California, and I'm really excited, bro. Like we got over a hundred people showing up, and that's just the people that register. So it might be close to two hundred people, bro. And remember, these are members, non-members, just people that love fucking trading. Because as you guys know, bro, if you talk to trading about anyone in your family, they think you're gambling. Now yeah. after eight years, they don't think I'm fucking gambling anymore. But it's still it's different <laughs> when you're first getting started, you know. <clears throat> I know, hey, uh, Harry. I, I'm bummed that you can't make it out, dude. Uh, well, Canada I'm trying. And all I'm, that craziness. I'm, I'm, I'm trying my best. Um, yeah. it, it, the, that, it, everything's changing daily, so yeah. you know. I hear, after, I hear, Canada's kind of, kind of strict with that stuff. Yeah, yeah, every like, even like here, like we went from like everything was like open to like 50 percent capacity to restaurants to like if you travel, you have to like quarantine for two weeks too. But if I don't know because like we might be back to complete normal. Like everything changes so frequently and it all the time. Right. It's like, yeah. And unexpected. Yeah. yeah. So well, you just, dude, you never know. It is what yeah. it is, but hopefully we're moving on and whatever. We'll, we'll move on from the COVID stuff. And, yeah. And at least for you, so, you don't have Tom Diesel showing up. I know, dude. I'm, I'm trying to get to fly a private jet out here. So, you can, you yeah. <laughs> so what are you guys yeah, doing for New Year's? Any plans? Um, well, for me, I'm not really sure yet on anything either. Cause like every, my dad bought like this whole fucking thing of lamb. Like he was going to like roast it and shit. Ooh, and now he's just like, now everyone in my family is like, ah, oh, fuck it. We're not even having dinner anymore. Like everyone's yeah. just so pissed off. So, yeah. I mean, I don't know Dude. what's going to happen, but <laughs> fuck, had, I, I really um, don't know. I had a sick new year's planned. I was going to, I have a, like the King suite at uh, Encore, which is like a casino in Boston. It was so fun. I hear it's really uh, nice there. Dude, it's sick. It's sick. And we were going to go out before we had like a table at some bar and like our club and it was going to be sick. Jeez. Everyone has COVID. Every yeah. single one of us, everyone has COVID right now. So I'm not, I'm not too sure. I think my new year's going to be kind of fucked, which, which really yeah, sucks. Yeah, it's but... fucked up, bro. I mean, like I'm going to go to Miami and just try to do something over there. But like, bro, uh, to be honest, like, I don't know. It's just it's just kind of sketchy right now everywhere, bro. I, I really don't I know. know. But well, COVID doesn't exist in Miami, so you're good to COVID go. COVID doesn't exist in Miami. It's just <laughs> it's, it's different out there, bro. It's different out there. The the lifestyle is different. Like 
The problem is, unless you have a metric shitload of money, you can't really do anything in Miami because, bro, when you're there, like you, you see these people balling the fuck out. And they're yeah. balling all day long. And I'm thinking to myself, what the hell are they doing for day job? Like, what the, are they selling <laughs> drugs? Like, how can you make this much money and not work? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, yeah. Anyway. Bro, but, bro, I follow your brother. He is living, man, all the time. Yeah, what, crazy, is, what an animal, man. Holy yeah, he's crazy. a legend. He's young. He's young. He's got money and he's living life. Alex, Absolutely. how did you, I guess, how did you deal with that? Because, like, I mean, to me, like, you're like a ball. Like, you make a shit ton of money. Like, you fucking have a lot. But. You go to places like that and you see people probably have more make you feel like, wow, how the fuck are they doing this? How do you like deal with that actually like day to day? Because you have a job that technically you can make as much as you want. Like yeah. you can sit here all day and make money if you wanted to, I suppose. But how do you deal with that? Because that's tough. Huh. So I don't know, bro. Like to be honest, like I just it just it makes me curious, bro. I, I would say I'm a very curious person. I like, mm. I think it may be just because like we're men, we like to learn how things work. Like if we like look at this fucking pen, I know that if I open it here, I could release the ink. And if I ever need more ink, I could get ink on this. I just like learning how shit fucking works, dude. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. and when someone has a shit load of money, bro, and I'm talking like multi multi-million dollar a year type money because that's hard bro to make to make a hundred grand is hard to make half a million dollars is very hard to make a million dollars is near impossible to make 10 million dollars a year i get curious bro i want to know how the fuck they do it right because yeah. to me bro i'm just i just want to learn bro i just want to learn so to me when i see these people and when i see what they're doing I mean, I just sometimes I get curious if I have the opportunity to ask, I ask. But what I've realized, bro, what I've realized is the two biggest wealth generators in the world in existence are real estate and the stock market. And some, sometimes it's fucking crypto too, right? We're in the world where crypto is yeah. some, some sort of yeah. crazy shit too. But to me, bro, it seems like real estate and stock market is how these people become mega rich. And if you own a public company, if whatever reason... That's how you become billionaire status, right? Because yeah, that's yeah. the only way, bro. The only way to become a billionaire, in my opinion, is to have a public company because the valuations are so extreme. Your company could make $100 million in revenue and you're worth $5 billion. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So for me, bro, it's just curiosity. I always want to know how people are making money. And I've learned that's real estate and stock market. And you know, I have some stock market holdings. I have some investments. I do like some, some things on the side. But you know, I like to stick to what I'm good at and I don't really have real estate because it's not something that I understand. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I have to be educated first. I yeah, understand I that no matter what we do, we have to learn. So just because I have a spare million dollars doesn't mean that I'm going to go buy a million dollar property and then become a landlord all of a sudden when I don't know how to fucking contact a plumber. I don't know if the fucking foundation is good. I don't know yeah. about the landscape. I don't know shit about that. Right. So I think the people that become mega, mega rich are experts in their field, right? So for example, I know the fucking market and I know until my fucking dying breath that eventually all the time, the fucking biggest companies are going to get bigger because they have a monopoly. Stocks like fucking Apple, stocks like fucking Amazon, stocks like Microsoft, stocks like Facebook, you could fucking, they'll go down for five years straight, but the next 10 years, they'll fucking quadruple. So that's yeah. where I park a lot of my money. I park a lot of my money into these assets that I know are legit. And I know someone that I used to trade with at SMB Capital. I would say maybe he's making conservatively $10 million a year, let's say, right? Conservatively. What he does, he takes all 10 million, puts it all in SPY. Every single penny, he puts it into fucking SPY. And he's making 20% a year, right? So yeah, I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to be the guy that tries to master everything. I'm really, really good at the market. And I, I think I've been looking at spy for the last eight years and sure, eventually it's going to go down, but let's say the market goes up 20% for five years for the three years that it goes down 10%, you're still fucking green. It's just a game of time. So I like to park my money into things that I understand. I understand the market. So I park it there. Uh, I've been kind of messing around with like some venture capital stuff because I'm trying to learn. So I'm parking it there. And I have some crypto investments. I hold Ethereum. I hold a little bit of Bitcoin, no shit coins, because I understand the technology. But real yeah. estate, bro, real estate, I don't understand it yet. 
And when I have the opportunity to learn and when I have the opportunity to slowly dive in, I will get there too. But I already know how to make a shitload of money. It's the market and real estate. Yeah. So our edge, because we're all fucking young, is time. Yeah. If you Most people start investing when they're fucking 40 because that's when they start to have money. For me, bro, I'm 27 and my investments are paying out fucking almost as much as my trading. Almost, right? Yeah. And if I could get it to the point where eventually that money is paying more, then bro, I'm that guy in Miami that doesn't have to fucking work, that doesn't have to do anything. And people wonder how, I, how the fuck I have all this money. Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's good. So, that's good. I, so that's, I, I love that. I, I mean, something I've dealt with that's like, so I think it's hard. And it's like, maybe it's just part of it. Cause I've been trading now three years. And I mean, Harry, I don't know if you've ever felt this too, but like, Harry, how long have it's you been like, trading? Like Almost six years, five, right? six years now. Like a yeah. long, long, long time. Let's do I think the hump is like two years. Yeah. I think if you could pass the two-year hump, because the first year, you don't know what the fuck you're doing. Yeah. The second year, you start to get a little bit of traction. If you could complete that second year, I think it's money. Yeah. And I mean, now, like even for me, like I'm even moving past the, the day ones. Like I've been really still working hard on just getting better and where I've made the most money this year has not necessarily always been day one stocks. There's been these multi-day runners yeah. where they've kind of like held up for day one. They've yeah. held up a little bit for day two. And then like day three and four, that type of move where everyone's kind of shorting on day one, they're hoping for it yeah. to day. Everyone's shorting on day two, they're hoping for it you to found, day. You found <clears throat> your niche now. You found yeah. <clears throat> exactly what works for you. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And so that was when I really kind of like took off. Like, I remember like a lot of people were messaging me like, oh, what did you see on the tape on LVGN? And I was like, and I messaged a lot of people. It wasn't necessarily about the tape. It was just the fact that this thing had not been breaking down at all. Like it yeah. should have. And yeah. especially when I, when I, like a lot of people, they first start longing and then they move into shorting because they understand that long game of being trapped and being a bag holder and being whatever. But I started with shorting. So yeah. I almost kind of reversed. Um, That's like, crazy. I almost kind of like reversed that type of role where I understood just like, you know, you're, you're short something and then it's not going down. It's not going down. It's not going down. You're like, fuck, this thing has to go down. It's a piece of shit company. Yeah. This thing has to fucking go down. Right. I, I know everyone's saying that and I'm completely in agreement with them. Like eventually it is going to go back to zero, but it's yeah. that time of when people start to get emotional and keep fighting and keep fighting and then we kind of get that bigger move but after that bigger move and shorts are blown out that thing is fucking done you do not try and long that thing after i mean when i ever. first started bro when i first started i had the reverse midas touch everything that i touched went the yeah. fucking shit like i was buying like stock that, and it was like a signal that it would crater you know yeah, yeah. So, and i mean what, it's crazy that you started the other way and now you're a fucking badass long trader yeah and i i mean also i think um like a part of it now is that I recognize that like day ones, like, and like, this is what I've been kind of talking about in other podcasts as well. Is like the day ones, like they're not, I'd say as like a lot of people got into trading and everyone, when everyone's trying to long something, like it's either really choppy on the way up or we just fucking fade because everyone's, everyone's long. Right. So when we have it's crowded, ev right. When we have everyone long, it's just goes the other way. So I found for a lot of these day ones, like, I, I don't recommend shorting them at all, but I also don't recommend longing them and trying to chase the top either. Like, you know, I get some DMs all the time just about that. So, I mean, yeah. just for me, like, it's just been such a headache every single morning where I'm like, yeah, I'm watching it. I'll take a look. But even for Austin too, like me and Austin talk a lot on a daily basis, just about like the current market and stuff like that. And it's just been a headache. So I just started focusing really on the kind of multi-day runners. And that is what has kind of given me the most edge, not necessarily day two low hang fruit, because like, I don't recommend that at all, but the stocks that kind of keep moving and keep moving forward. That's what I kind of focus on, you know, I think and all that did. But I think, I think the biggest problem is that, and we talk, I mean, we've talked about this a million times is everyone's in such a hurry to get there and they act like to have a job that you can have freedom for the rest of your life you deserve to make that money in the first year i mean it really is it's like year one like you said you have no idea what you're doing year two you're finding a little bit of footing i found like year three is where like the confidence came in maybe it's just because yeah. it's more timing like you're seeing in front of the screens i mean but every day i mean we start we, you had a youtube live yesterday you know you do a whole youtube live you explain everything you do to make money and some guy goes how did you do that 
And it's like, <laughs> yeah. these people just, no one can, no one pays attention. No one does it. And it's like, you know, the MIC process is there because it actually puts like a, it, I would say it jumpstarts your timetable significantly. You almost can, I don't want to say skip it. Like you kind of feel like you skip that kind of like very, very newbie stage. And I, mm. we see it with members all the time. You know, yeah. it's crazy. And I, so two things that number one is, I am coming up on my eight year anniversary. My eight year training anniversary is in February. That's so it's insane. like seven, seven years, 10 months, whatever the fuck it is. Okay. Any job that's going to make you millions and millions and millions of fucking dollars, bro, is not going to happen overnight. It's just impossible, bro. It's just fucking impossible. Like the way you have to think about it, bro, is you, you have the potential and I'm, I'm sure I'm making, I think this year is a little 3 million called whatever called 3 million, right? In the grand scheme of things, I'm a fucking nobody, dude. I know a guy yeah. that made $20 million this year trading, right? <laughs> I'm, I'm a nobody. It doesn't matter. But the point is that it took me, and that guy's been trained for 10 years, right? 10 years. Bro, it took me years and years and years to get here. And if you think that you're going to make more money than a doctor, a lawyer, and an engineer combined in your first year, it's impossible, bro. It's yeah. impossible. This is, this is like you being a professional athlete. Just because you get fucking drafted to the Knicks doesn't mean you're going to make $10 million your first year. You have to show up every single day to practice. You have to show up every day. And then once you get really good at it, yeah. then you will get your opportunity. But this is your opportunity. I mean, like, bro, like, you know how many fucking hedge funds and prop firms steal our traders? Literally. Yeah. They, yeah. Come, they come in and steal our fucking traders because they know that our guys have a solid foundation that they don't have to train them and they don't have to fucking teach them, right? Yeah. It's yeah. just, to me, bro, it's been me, a lot. It's no brainer, bro. It's no brainer. But the yeah. problem is, it's, it's, it's my mindset is long-term, bro. My mindset has always been long-term. And that's why I could take those $2,000 days. I take those $2,000 days every fucking day because I know that I, it's going to add up and that it's going to leave me less stressed. Bro, I have so many fucking things on my plate that I cannot afford to be stressed. And because yeah. I cannot afford to be stressed, it forces me to take the easy trades. Because, bro, I'm 27 years old. I got fucking white hairs over here. Like, <laughs> I've, been, I've been at the extreme highs. I've been at the extreme lows because of trading. I never want to get back to the extreme lows. And the extreme highs never feel as good as the extreme lows. So I'm in this middle ground. I'm in the yeah. middle ground of I don't make the most money on the year. But you better believe that I am stress-free. I could buy whatever the fuck I want. And essentially, a couple extra million, let's say another million dollars that I make is going to make me more depressed than happy because I'm not going to use that extra million anyway. I'm not going to use it. So why am I trying to do it? It's competition. It's ego. It's everything. It's all the evils inside of you. And yeah. bro, to be honest, like, I got no problem making $3 million a year working an hour a day. And if I really want, bro, I could go fucking drink. I could go take a nap. I could fucking play video games all day long. I could do whatever I want, but there's no reason to be pushing hard. There's no reason to be um, forcing because eventually there's going to be like a graph where the more money you make, the sadder you're going to get because the more stress it's going to entail. So you yeah. need to find a sweet spot between stress-free and your goals right and like bro think about you james you make consistently anywhere between 500 to two thousand dollars a day in your fucking sleep sure i mean 500 to two thousand dollars a day in your sleep sure it may not be a million dollars but it's, hey you're making half a million dollars working an hour a day and going to your fucking day job right and to me bro that's powerful it's very powerful yeah. because bro 500 grand a year a year is bro you're a top top fucking top one percent bro top that's top one yeah. percent so like i think people because of social media because of twitter because of all this shit they try to do more they think that they got to be the guy that makes 10 million dollars a year and if you're that guy making 10 million dollars a year i guarantee it's not stress-free i guarantee that it's not easy and you have to go back and realize what you want to do. If you want your entire life to be trading, go ahead and make $10 million a year. And then when you become rich and you have no friends, no family, you'll realize that it was wasted. Or you can be the guy that makes six to small seven figures very easily every single year. 
having a family, having a relationship, traveling, enjoying your fucking life and realizing yeah. that, hey, you still got money left over, bro. The guy that's yeah. making $10 million a year, trust me, bro, what he's doing with those extra millions is he's just buying property that he's not using. But what's the yeah. point? It's, it's true. It, it, it's, it, as I get older too, I, I just did this whole like, post on it actually. So I, this weekend I went to Portland, Maine with my girlfriend and one of my friends and <laughs> We ran into this couple and we were just, we just had a bar and we were talking and I, I didn't tell him what I do for work. We weren't even really talking about it, but he was a little bit older in his thirties. And he was just saying how he's done well for himself, but the best thing he has is he has unlimited time and he yeah. has all this time in the world to spend with his wife, his, you know, his family, everything. And he said that his, he had a job that was paying double and it was so fucking stressful. He was miserable. He fucking hated it. So now he Got he just found a new job that pays extremely well, but nothing crazy. He has no stress, nothing, and he's like extremely happy. And yeah. and that's something I've noticed in you out and like because so now I've been watching you trade for like almost four years or whatever. Mm -hmm. And it's like when MIC first started, dude, you were like like fifty thousand shares on this stock, fifty thousand shares on this yeah. stock, everything that moved, you were just in, and you would still make a shit ton of money. But the stress, and we used to talk on the phone about this, the stress was so obnoxious, just not worth it at all. And seeing you now, it's like you almost are at this like zen. Like you're really just like you're happy, you're good, and you're consistent with what you're doing. And I think that's probably why you make as much money as you do yes, now. So you gotta find crazy. the sweet spot, bro. Like when I was trading that side, bro. Like I was trading, bro. At I was trading any at any given day on any given small cap stock. I had anywhere between fifty to one hundred fifty thousand shares any day, right? <laughs> and by using that type of size, it kind of made me. Um, it kind of made me a little bit unemotional to the size because after you're trading that much size for that much, like for that long, you have nothing to do, but be emotionless because you cannot focus on the money. You must focus on the setup. And because I use so much size, when I drop my size down to like 5,000 shares from 150,000 shares, bro, I could get up. I could go get coffee. I could make a fucking burrito. I could do all this shit. And I still yeah. wouldn't care. I still yeah. wouldn't care because using that much size in the past and dropping it down brought me back to reality, brought me back to normal. And now, bro, now I never want to use that type of size again. Sure, bro. There are some days that I think to myself, bro, I could fucking make $10 million, bro. All I got to do is keep doing what I'm doing just a little bit better. I can make fucking 10 million. And then I think to myself, what the fuck am I going to do with that money? Like what the fuck? It's, it's, <laughs> it's useless. It's useless yeah. to me, bro. It's just sure. I want to make, everyone wants to make a hundred million. Everyone wants to make 10 million. Everyone wants to make 20 million. But once you, to get to that point, you must first make a hundred thousand. You must first make 500,000. You must first make a million. After you make that million, then you're going to, and you've paid off your family's house. You've helped this, helped that, done everything that you need. And you still have money left over you start to think what makes me actually fucking happy, right? You could have as many watches as you want, as many cars as you want, as many fucking women as you want. What makes me happy is the question you're going to ask. And to me, making an extra couple million is not going to make me happy. What's going to make me happy is being less stressed so that I don't take out my anger on family and loved ones. And because I live a life with low stress and focus on happiness, just so happens that the world rewards me with money, right? Yeah. And that's the that. mindset that I have. I, I love that. I think everyone should at least learn how to trade for like six months, everyone in the world, because it's a yeah. really a journey about kind of like self-discovery, I think. And you yeah. really kind of discover what you want in life because like you're doing something that has like unlimited potential, but it takes time to kind of figure out. And it takes a lot of mastering your own emotions and being in control of yourself. And I think a lot of people, what they don't understand is like, see, I have the exact same mindset and exact same approach as Alex, uh, like as far as stress, as far as like everything you just talked about, like the same type of mindset. But I think like, and like, I believe it's the same thing for James too, like we all do. And it's just because we've been around for a while. And I think we've really kind of been able to find through trading what kind of makes us tick and what kind of makes us better. And you know, I think about like, you know, a lot of stuff, there's a lot of people I know who have like a nine to five job and they're like, oh, like if I had a million, I'll be happy. If I had this, I'll be happy if I had that. But they're, they don't really have that kind of like, you know, experience or like trading back. Yeah. Because like, I think when people are trapped in nine to five, like that's all you think about till you're like, whatever is just money, whatever. Yeah. Just, money is a tool, bro. Money is a just, tool, right? So for example, it's having, <clears throat> having a million dollars in the bank does not directly lead to happiness. It is what yeah. you do with that money that 
will in turn lead to that. So for example, let's say um, like, okay, I'll give you an example. So for Christmas, Christmas just passed like five days ago and I bought myself like a new watch. I spent a bunch of money. I bought myself a new watch because I like art. I like time pieces. I like uh, store of value, whatever. I spent a lot of money on this watch. And what I did is it made me a little bit happy. Don't get me wrong. Like I was, I was happy, like on a scale from one to 10, I was probably like an eight. But what I did is one of my family members, uh, her husband lost her job because of COVID and they've been kind of struggling. They don't really have much money. So what I did is I got $20,000 in fucking cash, bro. Straight fucking cash. Like this, like a brick, this fucking big. And I wrapped it up and I gave it to her for Christmas and she started fucking crying, right? And that to me, that $20,000, which is just a fraction of what I spent on my watch, giving that to her, seeing her reaction, being able to change her life because of that, got my happiness to a 10 on the scale. So the 20,000 compared to, let's say the 100,000, the money, right? Spending more money sure made me a little bit happy, but even spending less money and using it for something better, yeah. brought that happiness scale higher you know what i'm saying yeah if you're not happy before the million you're not gonna be happy after it's just it's yeah. it is a it's a vicious cycle dude it's like i like i said i think it's just hard it's hard especially in today's world with like social media with everything you just see people blowing money like fucking crazy on crazy shit yeah and then you just you compare it to yourself so hard and it's like that's what i love about what we've like what we all have created here i think is that just we have a community of people that teach you like dude if you make a thousand dollars a day you know what honestly makes me so fucking happy? Like, it sounds stupid. When I go out to a steak dinner, I can go out with my friends. I can go out by myself. I get steak. I get a drink. I get... It makes me generally just smile. I don't know what it is. It's, I love the fucking food. Yeah, I love trying food and everything. You know what and it is for making, me, bro? You know what I really I love? love? I really love being able to click the button that says uh, overnight shipping, extra $50. I fucking click that button every fucking time, bro. I pay the extra fucking fee and I don't give a shit. And it's the best feeling ever, bro. I love that shit. No more ground shipping for free, waiting a week to get my shit. I hit $50, I get it overnight, bro. And that to me, bro, is being fucking rich. Yeah. Dude, that I was like it. when I sent you the uh, the floating shoe thing and it was in 30 seconds. You're like, all right, I'll be here tomorrow. And I was Big like, this, <laughs> this is crazy. But that's it, dude. It's like these little things in life that really do make you happy. And it's like, you don't have to make, of course, I want to make 10, 20 million dollars a year. Of course. Of course, bro. But, Who the fuck doesn't, bro? Of course. Yeah, you're an idiot. Bald? Do you want to be fucking depressed? <laughs> do you want to fucking. Like, you want to give up everything that actually matters, bro? And that's the thing, yeah. bro. Big money is possible. The MIC process took me from knowing fucking nothing to making fucking coffee, bro, to making millions and millions and millions of dollars. So by being in here, you have the right foundation and it is up to you to choose how much money you would like to make, right? If you only want to make $500 a day, we could teach you. If you want to make a million dollars a day, we could fucking teach you. It is the same fucking process just with more money. But before you can master making a thousand dollars or a hundred thousand, you must master how to make a hundred, right? That's just the whole fucking thing. If you don't know how to make a hundred, you cannot make a hundred thousand. So stop trying to go for a hundred thousand when you can't even make a hundred. Yeah. And I think the big, the big word there that a lot of people forget about is that they focus like on exactly what Alex just said, but they only focus on the hundred dollars or the hundred thousand. And they don't focus on the process, which is like the key part of that whole sentence is the process is the the steps that you're taking every single morning the stock selection the you know looking everything up the flow you know the bigger picture it's it's the it's the process that is going to make you that money and it's not when i first started bro i had no process i don't know what a process was i didn't i didn't get it bro and everyone throws around the word process but no one like no one really explains it so for me guys what a process is that it's a routine and it's a strategy that i could repeat to make money every day So for me, when I first started, I had no repeatable thing. I had a little bit of a strategy. I was looking for stocks that gapped up and wicked back. That was my strategy. But the repeatable part was I was trading all fucking day long. I would make money in the morning. The stock would rebound midday. I would get squeezed and I would lose my money. It wasn't until we implemented something to the process called the zombie rule that improved. Mm -hmm. It wasn't until I started wiring out that things improved. So for me, it took me a while to refine my process. And by having that process, by having that routine, it changed my life. I say it all the time and no one listens. The zombie rule made me a millionaire. The zombie rule made me a millionaire and no one really listens. Like 
like the reason why the zombie rule came to life is bro i would trade with bow every fucking day and i would notice every fucking day midday he would give back half his fucking day and until <laughs> we sort of refined it to know exactly what fucking time it happens bro both of us were going for all day faders we were trading random just because the stock tanked in the morning and bounced midday we were like oh time short the bounce and then it went through high the day so after yeah. years of watching my trading account accountability buddy lose money midday we we're like you know what let's fucking change this and let's find let's create a process let's create a routine let's create a repeatable something to make sure that we don't fucking lose money after the morning that's where the zombie rule came into play and then when i started being disciplined with the zombie rule meaning i followed it every day bro i became a millionaire yeah, and the yeah, thing is, is that, oh, dude, James, you can go if you want. God, no, I, I was oh, just no. going to say, I, I, hate, I hate hearing that people, <laughs> I hate hearing that people like critique like the zombie rule or they critique like part of the MIC process in a way because at the end of the day, it's all loops back to what we're talking about. It's like, sure, you could stay here all day long and technically trade. Yeah, you could make some money. Yeah, you could lose some money. Most likely you're going to lose some money, but you could stay all day. But what is that extra 500 bucks going to do for you, right? It's really not going to change much. Your best trades come from that 9.30 to 10.30 slot. After that, it's like you take what the process gives you. It's good money. It's enough. It's plenty. You don't need to stay here all day. That is not why we do this. It's not why I fucking trade. Let's say we finish our trading from, let's say we trade from 9 to 10.30. Just make it easy, right? An hour and a half, yeah. whatever. Um, that's where you make, let's say you make $1,000. Okay. Okay. And then you trade from 1030 to four and you make an extra $500. That extra fucking five, six hours of trading, is it really worth the stress and that extra money? Or instead of that, why don't you go out to lunch from 11 to fucking 12? At 12 to one, go to the fucking gym. From one to two, take a fucking nap, wake up, you know, take a shower. And all of a sudden you still got an hour until the market closed. You could do so much with your life if you just trade the MIC process properly. And that's the best thing. We have yep. a superpower that we could work for one hour and the rest of the day, we could do whatever the fuck we want. And that's why I was actually talking to a member yesterday. Um, his girlfriend uh, DM me on Instagram. Like uh, she lost her father because of COVID. And one of our members like really helped her, like really helped her through it. She's like, all he wants for Christmas is just like, talk to you. Could you talk to him? I was like, yeah, like I'll call him. Like he, he's exactly what we want. In MIC. We want someone that helps other people. And when someone loses their father, and the guy is like trading and he's trying to learn and try to help. I mean, to me, that's exactly the type of person we want. So I was talking to him and basically what we kind of, uh, what we kind of got down to is that after a certain amount of, uh, after a certain amount of doing this, after a certain uh, way of, of, of trading, after you do all this stuff for <laughs> enough time, you're going to realize what's really, really important. In that moment, he realized that taking care of his girl was more important than fucking scalping bullshit trades. And because of that, the world rewarded him with like a call from me, you know? Yeah. I love that. No, I love that. I love that. Actually, uh, <clears throat> I, I, I went back like, cause like, I don't know. I was just super bored one day and wasn't anything really going on. Also, I live in Canada. So like, there's like what you guys have divided by 10. So, yeah. um, you know, <laughs> I was super bored. So, and I was looking at it. I remember there were a couple guys who would always trash the zombie rule to bow. They would <laughs> always like tweet at bow. They'd always, you know, you know, message the zombie rule. So I just searched up like from modern rock. And then I was like zombie. And I was just kind of scrolling down, up. scrolling down. All the accounts are fucking gone, bro. Every one of those yeah. guys blew up because they were like, they, they try so hard to, to find something wrong. And they're like, Oh, the zombie rule. You're like, I, I saw a stock fade after 10 30. Like that's, that's not a rule. That can't be true. And then all of them blew up shorting zombie, right? Even if 30% of the stocks uh, go up over high day, keep running after zombie rule, you are going to lose more money on those stocks than you do holding for the fade. It's like opinion. the people that said Tesla, Tesla is going bankrupt yep. or the market is going to fucking <laughs> crash three years later. Yeah. They're all fucking there, broke. They're mortgaging their houses to cover everything. It's yeah. it's crazy. The beauty of the MIC process is in its simplicity. Like the simplicity of it is very like I'm like I, I told you guys I'm teaching that guy who owns the store next to the shop and like dude every day he's like how can it be this easy to make money like to make money and I'm like it's it actually it's sadly I hate to sound like a dick it is easy it's just can you stick to it 
it is the yeah. it, but that's the reason i think 90 percent of people that they fail they can't follow like a basic guideline which we have and like i don't know i, I like this episode a lot because i feel like it it really wasn't even about trading. It was more about like, kind of like money and all that stuff. But at the same time, it really does implement back into your day-to-day trading. Just yeah. you take your money. We're doing something amazing. That's it. And I love it. One last thing know. before, before we finish up is do you guys have any new year's resolutions or any things that you're trying to do going into the new year's? <laughs> very, uh, mine, very good. mine for sure. I think is just working on like me and my girlfriend both talked about this and we said 2022 was going to be more about like self-care. Like my girlfriend is going to graduate from university. Um, and like, you know, I guess like when she was in university too, it was just like kind of like learning trading. Like you're always stressed out. You're always running around like, and with me and trading, like I can always go to the, the library with her and like go on MIC or look at stocks or do whatever. Like, I mean, I, I, I can always do that. So like I spent a lot of time with her as well. And I found that like she was really stressed out and like we just we had a lot of like family shit going on and you know shit like that so we said that 2022 was really going to be about uh self-care going to the gym and sticking with it trying to eat a little bit healthier oh my god bro i become such a fat ass bro i went to the yeah. gym dude, i consistently went to the gym five days a week for a year straight yeah. and then in like november bro i was just like really fucking stressed i felt like really overwhelmed with like life and I took like a couple days off and then that turned into a week off and then that turned into a fucking month off. And all of a yep. sudden, bro, now I'm fucking fat. So I'm going to really try to do that too. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's what happens. That's 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 what happens. Yeah. I don't yeah. know. I think, I think for me, my, my goal this year is to, I really want to find more happiness outside of like kind of what we're talking about outside of anything to do with financials or even just comparison bias. Like I'm one of those people I suffer from it. I find it very hard. I go on Instagram, Twitter, anything. I see people doing crazy baller shit. And I'm like, fuck man. Like it just, it bothers me deep down. And I'm like, you know, what you got to remember about that, bro, is I know a lot of people that do shit like that and are in debt because of it. Like I know my dude, my girl's uh, friends, like they, let's say on an engagement ring, they spent a hundred K 75k of that is on a loan so to me, bro, to me <laughs> if you're spending up money that you don't have on a ring to show off to other people you're already fucked you're yeah, already yeah. fucked and that's I, what I, everyone I does bro it's not just the shit that you see it's everyone so you may see a guy flexing in a fucking lamborghini but he's probably in debt in debt because of that car just to fucking flex yeah, I, love that. yeah, I have no, all those people true. muted. I, I literally have yeah. everyone on Bro. fucking Twitter muted. I have everyone Thank muted except for Alex, Dow, a couple other people. Instagram yeah. too, fucking muted. Not, See ya, goodbye. That's why it's just it's my muted. goal, man. It's my goal. I think it's, all, uh, I think it's a good one. Yeah, and fucking that's what I did. I deleted it. Mute those fuckers. I deleted it from my phone and fuck it. But Alex, what's your New Year's resolution? Um, Honestly, bro, my, my resolution, I guess, is I basically just want to just enjoy my life more, bro. Like I'm, yeah. I'm, as you guys know, bro, I'm here all day long, seven days a week. I don't fucking leave this office. I, I work like a fucking animal. And what I realize is if I even take like a few days off, I feel like a brand new person, but it takes me four, five months of stress to take one week off. So yeah. my goal, bro, is every quarter, I want to take a one week vacation just to start. Obviously that's still fucking nothing. Um, that's kind of what I want to do just to start. And also I want to start funneling money into other investments so that I have peace of mind and I have a safety net because the goal is always take that short-term money from trading and funnel it into other things. And that's kind of what my uh, goals are. My goals are by the end of 2022 to have all my, I guess, investments set up for me in the right way. And I'm, I'm pretty much almost there. I'm pretty much almost there. I should be I should be good in a couple more months, just parking the money in like a couple different places. Yeah, I, I that's love funny. That, I love that's that. funny because I used to message Alex like at least once a year and be like, "Man, I'm so fucking stressed, bro. I'm so fucking stressed." And Alex would literally say to me, "Take a week off," and then I'd be like, "Bro, but I can't." And then I'd end up like <laughs> taking like two days off, three days off because like I think I really learned like when I was younger, I had you guys to kind of learn from. So I was like, "Oh." You know, what are Alex and Bao doing? How much work are they putting in? And then you'd see Alex like on the YouTube lives, like I'm here all day staring at the screen. Like I'm, I'm working hard. I'm well, you guys see screen. it. You guys see it of, yeah. over here. The mentors and moderators lead by example. 
I don't tell everyone to work all fucking day and then just fucking I don't do anything, right? Yeah. The reason why I trade in the morning and walk away is because we have the entire MIC community to run, right? We yeah. have an army of people behind the scenes, right? An army of people working this yeah. stuff as someone has to lead the army, right? So my job as a leader is not only to lead, but to lead by example, to show everyone yeah. What can happen if every day you walk away at zombie time? If every day you make a plan, you can make as much money as me. The only way that's possible is if I do it and I show you because you have no excuse. If I'm showing you every fucking day for 12 months straight, I'm walking away at zombie times and I'm making millions of dollars. What is your excuse not to? I am leading by example. And that's what you guys are doing too. Yeah. I love it. It's oh, yeah. Probably a good place to wrap it up. That's a good place to wrap it up. Oh, Thanks, let's make you, some Alex. fucking money yeah. today, man. Yeah. Yeah. For let's real. Do it. All right. Bye.